My name's Lee Gray. I'm the Wild Gourmet. In 1980, I left Beverly Hills, California, and came to the Northwest Oregon in search of the wild foods of the Northwest. Here in this cave, I spent the winter of 1982. Three and a half months, I foraged, I crabbed, I fished, I walked the forest, and I ate my breakfast, lunch, and dinner right here in this cave. I brought you here to share with you some of the bounties of what I've discovered in Oregon. In the following shows that come up in the next few weeks, you'll go out in the woods with me. We're going to go mushroom picking. We're going to be picking edible greens. We're going to be going to the beach and picking up crabs and clams and mussels and all kinds of wonderful edible things. I think you'll have a good time. So put on your rubber boots, grab a bucket and a knife, and let's go have some fun. Hi, I'm Lee Gray, the Wild Gourmet. Thanks for joining us for another exciting outdoor episode of the Wild Gourmet Show. Today we're going to be out picking cattail shoots. And I'm going to show you all sorts of uses that the Native Americans and the early pioneers used cattails for. They use them for oh, anywhere from bedding to edible greens to uh, just all sorts of stuff. So you can flour to cook with and all kinds of things. So come along with me and I'll show you how to pick some of those shoots today. And we'll discuss some of the other uses for the cattails. picking cattail shoots you want to try to differentiate them from some of the other products that are growing the other plants that are growing out here you don't want to pick these brilliant green ones you want to pick these this green here has kind of a bluey more of a bluish tint I call it instead of a brilliant green you can see that the difference in the color of the two plants this little plants in the iris family you don't want to eat those so really sting your tongue badly have a lot of toxins in them so you want to make sure you get this kind of bluish green you can also see they have some the old chafe from last year sticking up so you can kind of reach down close by the water and grab hold of it and give it a little yank and there you go there's a whole cattail shoot you want to try to make sure you bring it up like into one whole piece break it off short you can always throw it away throw it in your bucket some more of those shoots here Nice little one there. If we broke that one off a little short, so we'll just leave it. It'll grow back. Another one. There's another one. You can see it kind of zip along and get quite a few actually. There's three of them right there. We'll put those in the bucket. They're just growing all through here. Just got to kind of pick and choose. Make sure you get the right ones. This one's, that's about as tall as I like to get them. About two feet tall, above the water. Any thicker than that, and they're kind of left over from last year. You can see the new shoots just starting to come up. Make sure you don't pick those other ones. Anyway, I kind of wanted to talk about the uh, some of the other uses. The uh, Native Americans went ahead to use the punks here. That punk, we're going to bend this down here. You can see it's kind of fluffy. The punks they'd take and they'd just break them up and they'd use that fluff for bedding and waddlings for babies. And women would use it for their menstruation period to, uh, as a woman would use a Kotex now, they just wad that up and put it around their tunics and that staunch their blood. You can also use it for staunching blood for an open wound. It breaks up real easy, but it's nice and soft and fluffy, and like I said, make good pillows, make made good beds. Uh, cattails would also be good for making paper. I know you can actually use some screens and screen this stuff and lay it out, and you can probably make paper just out of these too. But uh, the stems, or the green parts that we were looking at green over there, when they're dry, if you break this up and and try to make a paper product out of it. It makes a really good paper. It actually even feels like paper when it's like this and you're using it. Anyway, the uh, natives use the uh, long stems, the dried ones like this. They use these to make uh, mats and uh, baskets. And the fronds were used for making basket making. Uh, let's see what else. Lots of things like that. 
Um, just mats for coverings for walls and floors to walk on. Um, the root makes a really good coffee substitute. It's much like postum actually in flavor and texture and color. You uh, just take and you break them down and you get to the, there's a real hardened part in the center. It's like a core. You take that core and you throw it in the fire or oven and bake it until it turns black. Once it's black, then you put it in a grinder and grind it up or use a motor and pestle and, and grind it up and make a coffee substitute out of it. Like I said, it's very much like possum or something like that. But anyway, it's a caffeine-free coffee drink. Um, you can also use the, uh, the flour to make a, a white flour for baking. It's an unleavened flour, so it wouldn't rise. So, but you could use it for adding to other flours that would rise and it would flavor and extend your flour recipe. Um, when you're using the roots down there at the bottom, the rhizomes, you pull those up and break them up into water and strain everything out and just keep working at it and get all the starch. You, it's basically a starch. You get all the starch out of the, the roots and then you remove all the debris and then let it settle. Then you pour off the water, let it dry, and then you can grind it up and turn it into actually a nice white powdery flour that you can use in baking. Uh, also, the, right above the, the uh, punks here, you can see in the background, you all know there's a little stick that sticks up here. There's only part of one here on this one. You can see there's just a little tiny bit of the stick. It'll stick up about another four or five inches on top. And before these turn brown, when they're nice and green, there'll be a little punk, a little before it turns into a punky thing like this, you can actually eat them when they're green. And I call those cattail cobs because the portion from here up is actually the pollen spike, which is, has a nice golden colored pollen to it. And you can actually break them off. I'll show you how to do that. And just bounce it into a bag and you can gather the pollen. And it has a nice nut-like flavor and real golden color. Um, it's really pretty and it's nice to add to... Uh, cookies and pancakes and all sorts of cakes and all sorts of things. More of a, a sweet type flour that you can use. But uh, it's very expensive when you buy it. <laughs> I sell it. I charge a lot of money for that because it's really time consuming to gather. It takes a long time to get any poundage going. But um, So there's a lot of usage for the cattails. As I think about them, we'll use them. Let's get back to picking some more cattails here. I want to get a few so we can show you how to cook the cattail shoots one of my favorite recipes we're going to do marinated cattail shoots and served cold and they're very delicious okay i'll get back to you in a little bit thanks for joining us we'll keep picking here Well, I guess, guess we got enough for what uses we want to do today. We're going to just going to steam those lightly and chill them down and marinate them. And so we got pretty much enough for that. It's enough to do a nice little party, three or four people for a nice appetizer or just a nice little tray put out for an appetizing party. So come on, let's go back to the kitchen. And thanks for joining us for another exciting outdoor segment of the Wild Gourmet Show. I'm Lee Gray with the Wild Gourmet, your host. Thanks for joining us. Hi, we just got back from picking all those cattails. And uh, what I did, I let them soak in some fresh water for a little bit. and put about half a bucket of water in here. Just let them soak and keep it fresh while I'm working on them. Kind of helps wash the ends and the dirt off, too, of anything you might have gotten on them. So that helps keep your product clean while you're working on it. Anyway, the cattails are pretty easy to clean. All you got to do is take one. Grab it and start stripping away all the old stuff that's on there, just like that, until you get down to a nice, clean-looking piece like this. And uh, this is what I try to sell or eat. Uh, when they're fresh like this, it's really strange, but they taste just like cucumbers. Mmm. Yeah, delicious. Makes a great um, imitation of cucumber salad. I want to just marinate it, and I like to do them in rice wine vinegar, with some sliced wild onions, and cattails sliced up and round. 
and you make a mm, really delicious salad just like that. You don't need anything else. Then you want to eat them, you get down there and see it start getting all fibrous. The inside's still good, so excuse me while I talk while I eat, but it's kind of hard to do this without it. But I want to show you this. Excuse me for my bad manners. So anyway, you go ahead and you peel back the next layer or two until it's nice and tender again, where you can bite through it again. Mm. Same thing if you're chopping it up and start getting that fibrous part. Just pick it back a little bit further and, you know, good. 